Hi, I'm Amy. I'm here from Darwin. I'm a part of a group called Top End Comedy um, and I've worked with Nick Coppin in the past on some of our um, comedy performances and workshops. So I'm here in Melbourne uh, for the Melbourne International Comedy Festival where I'm doing a gig with Nick uh, and really looking forward to seeing all the rest of the comedians that are out and about here. Do not mess with Glaswegians. <laughs> Fucking crazy, man. A guy in Edinburgh tells me a highlight, it's a story as to why you shouldn't mess with Glaswegians, right? He tells me a story, I don't even know if it's true, but it makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> he was in Blair Drummond Safari Park with his fan in a car. The height, just behind their car, was a bus of Glaswegians on a day out, right? Now there's this massive hold-up, nothing moves for ages in the safari park. So all of these Glaswegians get out of their bus, because they're bored, right? So they thought, I have a cigarette. So the park ranger comes up and says, guys, what are you doing? This is a safari park. Please, please get back in your bus. There are lions everywhere. <laughs> and one of the Glaswegian guys goes, relax, pal. We're not gonna touch a fucking lion. <laughs> so I'm pretty new to comedy. I'm one of the, the newbies. Uh, I've been going uh, at it for about a year and a bit. Uh, the first comedy I ever did was a raw comedy final because in the Northern Territory they don't have heats, they just chuck you straight into the final small pool of fish. Um, but I got started in comedy because um, I'd started to get a little bit too confident. My ego was getting a little bit large, so I decided to do something that I thought um, would terrify me. Turns out it not only terrified me, I also got a little bit addicted to it. So now I, um, I run and help coordinate events with Top End Comedy up in Darwin. Uh, and do festival shows uh, at Adelaide Fringe and Melbourne International Comedy Festival. So it's amazing how quickly things can go from just something that you did it as a dare uh, to something that is kind of like a second job now, which is exciting. Have you ever thought about how ridiculous it is to like things on Facebook? Yes. Have a think about it for a second, because for me, when I like something on Facebook, that basically means I'm saying, can't really be fucked joining in the conversation, but I acknowledge that what you said was okay. Here's a thumbs up. <laughs> if people did that in real life, all of your friends would be jerks. Because you'd be having this really great conversation with your friends, and then all of a sudden a random's going to crack into the door. You say something witty and they just go... <laughs> and then disappear and do nothing else to add to that conversation. Just be like, what the fuck, what are you doing? And then you'd have a friend over who's like looking at like your bookshelf and they'll see a photo of your family and they just kind of turn towards you and do this. <laughs> All of a sudden liking things just got a whole lot creepier, huh? <laughs> Oh, when we first met uh, Nick, we were looking for somebody to do some workshops for Top End Comedy, which is a collective of comedians in Darwin. There's not many opportunities for professional development or support for comedians in Darwin, so uh, we got a grant from the local government and uh, a friend of ours had a contact with Nick Coppin and we got him over from the UK. He ran three days worth of workshops and then did a showcase uh, with about ten of our best comedians. And it was amazing, like the, the increase in skills and confidence of our local comedians has been massive. Uh, and just the reputation that we've gained from having somebody like Nick Coppin work with us locally um, has really helped grow the scene for Darwin comedians, so Nick's pretty awesome. Yeah, so I, I did these workshops in, in, in Darwin, it's quite interesting because I'd, I'd sort of seen and know how workshops work, but I, I, I've, I've never run a workshop, I've never done a workshop, and when I started comedy, I started just doing it the organic way, just turning up at gigs uh, and just getting on. Um, but I was asked by a group of people in, in Dante's workshops, and what happened was they were looking at people over here because they had this grant from Arts uh, in the Northern Territory. Um, and then uh, I think they had a, a bit of a difficulty finding someone uh, to come up to Darwin, I believe. And then one of the girls, Rachel Bettines, uh, I'd known her from, she used to work in a bar in Melbourne and now she does comedy uh, in the top end in Darwin. And, uh, and her boyfriend, Stuart, said, uh, what about your friend Nick? He's been doing comedy for years. He's been all over the place. Why don't we get him up? So she Facebooked me about this opportunity. Uh, and I said, OK, yeah, whatever. What, what is it? And she said about coming up and doing some workshops and uh, with some, a load of new acts in Darwin because you're an international comedian. You've been all over the place, all over the world, to America, to New Zealand, to Australia, all over Europe. So do you want to come and, and, and workshop with, with some of our, our, our comedians? And then we'll do like a, a gig at the end of it where you're headline and all these acts will do a, a spot. So Nick came over and did three days of workshops leading to a performance night. So we all had to get together our best five minute sets, a bit like a raw comedy final, uh, and Nick was the headliner of that. But during the workshops he went through things like you know, your writing and your content, how to um, deal with hecklers, that was a really good one that he went through, how to grow the scene, 
how to have confidence in your stage presence. Uh, and we did these activities where you got to um, get up on stage and rant for say five minutes about a random topic that he gave you. So it was a lot of improv work, which for a lot of our comedians was a really big thing to learn because most of them are very new and improv and that sort of theatre sort of sports isn't something that we have a lot of experience in. So Nick facilitated some really great activities that um, we have continued to run now that Nick's not in Darwin. So he's kind of set up a, a, like a thing for us to, to grow on. I've never actually um, run a workshop before. So what I did was I looked into just roughly how workshops work. I mean, I know how comedy works. I know how it all works and how to pass on the information. But to do it in a, in a controlled environment, I, 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 I didn't quite... I'd never done that before, so um, I, I basically sat in, uh, I spoke to a couple of uh, comedy mates that run workshops and sort of just saw how they structured them and I sat in on one and saw how it all worked and yeah and I took that and uh, with the, the, the vast knowledge of uh, and experience of travelling all over the world and doing all these festivals I uh, imparted my wisdom to some new acts in Darwin, they were great, they were a great bunch to work with, very supportive of each other, uh, very supportive of, 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 of me and very respectful. Just a great time really in Darwin. They're a very, very good bunch of people. So after the workshops that we did with Nick Coppin, um, a lot of our confidence grew and a lot of our skills actually grew. And um, Nick was really kind enough to take three ladies from Darwin down to the Adelaide Fringe Festival to be a part of his showcase events. Uh, it was a really amazing opportunity. He got us eight gigs in three days, which for people in Darwin is like mind blowing. That is a lot of gigs. Uh, and it was a lot of fun. It was a great experience. And we were just really grateful for people like Nick that you know, could see a bit of potential, provide an opportunity and support that growth of smaller comedians. Uh, Nick was excellent in terms of feedback after performances and making sure that we left with, I guess, greater confidence, greater skills and more networks. And I think that there's um, a lot to be said about a comedian that isn't doing it just for himself, is doing it to help others as well. I think there's um, a lot that others can learn um, from him in terms of like taking an opportunity to mentor some younger um, comedians. Uh, I'd like to think Nick got a bit out of mentoring us. Um, so he had three ladies to follow him around Adelaide, so I'm sure he enjoyed that. Um, and I also think that uh, showcase events at things like Melbourne International Comedy Festival and Adelaide Fringe are really important opportunities. So these five to 10 minute slots that people are putting on and producing are really amazing opportunities for new comedians and I think that if you're an audience member getting along to these showcases and seeing some unknown comedians is such an excellent way to support the scene's growth and also one day you might be like oh I saw them before they were famous and it can totally be a claim to fame so it's great we love Steve Irwin everyone loves Steve Irwin the Americans love Steve Irwin the Kiwis loved him the whole world loved Steve Irwin in many ways he was your answer to Princess Diana <laughs> Which is quite ironic, because when you think back, they both had exactly the same hairstyle. <laughs> and obviously there's a bit of that we love. Because obviously I did mention the States, and I know that obviously, you know, it's not so bad now, because they got rid of that idiot George W. Bush, but everyone has to go at the Americans. And I'll be honest with you, like it was mentioned by the Pom hair, right, that I, I, I've been to America. I think, no matter what people say, the Americans are very positive, upbeat, fun people. But I find this, if anything, I've got an issue with their northern cousins. Well, I have, because like, whenever I meet, like, you know, someone with that, that accent, I'm like, oh, it's nice to meet you. Which part of America are you from? I'm not American, man, I'm fucking Canadian. <laughs> no, I'm British, I apologise. I'm like, I'm sorry, but you do kind of sound the same. <laughs> that never helps the situation. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, man. Well, how would you like it if I were to keep saying that you sounded like you were from Scotland? I'm like, yeah, but I don't. 